Hey, it's Amway from Difference in Skill, and this is episode 23 of Cards for Thoughts. And it is a jewel night. Sadly, it's not the Quantum Shield because I told Chan that I'll let him do it, so yeah. So I would do it, but can't really give my thoughts on it, I guess. But I guess I'll just briefly tell you that. I just think the card is fair, and if you guys have questions for me about it, then just put it in the comments and I'll try and answer it before the episode actually comes up. So anyway, I'm doing another jewel line, and I think this card is also very good. So, so this unit is called Banding Jewel Knight Miranda. Uh, so her effect is a weird guard effect only. When this at unit attacks, if you have a vanguard with Ashley in its card name, this unit gets power plus 2000 until end of that battle. Uh, her second effect is when this unit attack hits vanguard, if you have a vanguard with Ashley in its card name, choose another of your royal paladin, and that unit gets power plus 3000 until end of turn. Uh, very good card. First of all, it's a great 2, it's 9k. It gains 2,000 power as long as you're playing Jewel Knights with, uh, with I guess, Ashley. Uh, which I think most people will because Reverse Ashley is quite a decent card. So it hits the 11k, which is very good. It's not 12k, but it's not really a big deal because 11k is actually uh, one of the really good numbers in this current format as well because all great 3s are basically 11k anyway. Um, Except I guess lately they've been churning out a lot of cross rides, but still doesn't really matter because the 11k and basically every booster in the game now with um, at least most booster in the game now is basically 7k, right? So the 11, 7, 18, very good numbers. Okay, so that's the first part. Of course there's a condition you need actually, but it's not really a big deal because I'm assuming that the only reason you're playing Jewel Knights is because you're playing Ashley anyway. Um, of course some people don't exactly like the idea of running the ride break actually because she kind of sucks in a way. Um, she's one of the worst ride breaks in the game really. Like, gain 10,000 in critical, uh, I feel like a lot of things do that. I mean, Dimension boys, they, they just gain critical and they gain additional effect, right? So, and they gain power at the same time, so yeah. Um, even though it costs one, but not really a big deal. Uh, basically there's better ride breaks out there. Uh, second effect. Second effect is actually very powerful in my opinion as well because uh, basically this says that if this card hits and if your vanguard is Ashley, which is kind of an unconditional effect, then you can choose another unit and gain 3000 power. Um, that is very good. It puts pressure on your opponent for sure. Um, this card will most likely hit a decent number. Um, even if it has no booster, it's hitting for 11, it will still kind of annoy the like crap out of your opponent because like if it's 11k, right, and because the effect says that if you hit, you can add 3000 power to another unit, um, most of the time the other unit is probably hitting a decent number as well, and if it gains an additional, like if you set up properly, um, which I find that it's very difficult in this current format and especially because if you're playing Ashley reverse which you can call units out and whatnot um, it becomes even easier to set up a good role the additional 3000 power will probably put units at like, like or like give that additional boost to hit 21 right um, of course that will put a lot of pressure on your opponent especially if you using Ashley's effect already then uh, more or less they should be at 4 or 5 damage and this card just becomes really good at that point um, really nothing much to say, there's really no downside, like I mean, it's great to 11k, 9k base, uh, has quite a decent effect, well, it, it's double R, I guess that's the demerit, more expensive, uh, but this is basically one of those, like, cards that Jewel Knights really needed, because Jewel Knights have that weird condition where their 12k attacker, has a really tough condition compared to most of the cards in this most of the cards compared to this format like I think they need 4 Jewel Knights on the field or was it 3? I don't remember but all I know is they need close to a full field of Jewel Knights on the field just to actually have that condition of hitting 12k um, that's pretty hard before it, it's, they're making it easier now because they're releasing a lot more Jewel Knights but like I mean when it first came out there were there was basically not enough jewel knights to fill your deck with to uh, make kind of make those effects good. Especially the grade one version also needs like four jewel knights. Um, it loses that utility where you can't just put them out at grade two um, and have a twelve k attack because like 
at grade 2, it's pretty difficult to set up a full field, and it's not really... I, I don't really suggest doing that at grade 2 a lot of the times, unless maybe you're grade 7 and you need to kind of rush for game. Because when you put too many weird guards out, you uh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy for an opponent to target them, and like, when you... Basically, when you're rushing in the early game, you don't have any shielded guards, so it's pretty hard to return a field like that. Um, but of course, it is a roll paladin, mm -hmm. so you can always like put units out from your deck. You can shit them out with effect, but um, of course, if actually reverse, you actually need to lock one. So it's kind of I don't really consider a big deal, but of course, you do have to wait till limit break four to activate that ability. Um, so. If you don't have cards in the beginning to play with, it's not fun, but yeah. So this card is, I think this card is really good, like really necessary. Um, and I think they're actually making more of this type of card for um, most clients out there. So, so this is something new, like something new in the format, like relatively, uh, they, they basically just introduced it in this set. Hopefully we'll maybe like see more of these in the future of other clients, like, um, Especially some of the lower tier clients, I think these cards are like really good um, because they basically hit decent number and have a decent effect, and it is costless. So why, like, there's really no reason why not to run them. Um, I guess in the conditions, like this actually might replace all the ten, like, uh, ten k vanilla cards actually because um, even though you have a lower base power, you're actually hitting, you have more utility than the ten k attackers. Like, I like to play 10k vanillas because, uh, mainly just because at grade 2, I can block most effects. Um, like, any on hit effects of grade 2s, but um, with cards like these, I actually might start just not playing 10k vanillas. Um, especially if they release one of these for basically every client. Um, of course, maybe this is one of those things where Bushiro is trying to balance the format by giving only these to, like, lower tier clients because. Basically, only they kind of deserve it because the higher tier clans having these, I think, would be pretty damn broken. <laughs> um, because you're basically changing your entire grade two lineup into something that can hit a grade three without any booster, and that's that is that's pretty good. That that is um doubt, like no doubt. I would say that's good, and I don't know if every client actually. Like, I don't know if all the top tier clans deserve this type of card, like this type of utility, but um, I'm guessing the idea is if the lower clans get them, why not the higher, but of course I think these being reserved to the lower clans, like the lower tier clans would be a bit more fair to the game, and yeah, so I think I'll wrap it at, up at this, yeah I'm speaking gibberish because it's kind of late and all if you can see it on the side here. But yeah, let's wrap it up here, and I'll be back in episode 24, so I'll see you later, guys.